So glo global health really uh, encompasses issues that are, are related with the access to healthcare in developing and emerging countries. And for the research-based pharmaceutical industry, it really can be uh, translated into a question, which is how to ensure access for all patients, including the poorest, while at the same time ensuring funding for research and development and innovation. So the Global Health Initiative was uh, initiated under the auspices of FPA uh, in order to bring to uh, European decision makers uh, the views of the research-based uh, industry on uh, access to healthcare in the developing world. And uh, we felt it was important uh, that the voice of the industry be heard because of the complexity of all the issues related with access to healthcare in the developing world. These issues are very complex because, in fact, there are, many, there are many reasons why people may not have sufficient access to healthcare, starting by the existence of sufficient healthcare infrastructure, appropriately trained uh, healthcare professionals capable of diagnosing a disease, treating it, following up patients, and so forth. And, and this debate, oftentimes, of access to healthcare is uh, summarized too briefly into uh, the issue of access to medicines and even in a, more sh in a shorter way. Uh, about the price of medicines. And our message is really uh, access to healthcare cannot be summarized uh, only in terms of price of medicines. There are sets of issues that are much broader and that involve many, many stakeholders. And one of the most interesting debates we've had uh, was about uh, technology transfer. And uh, the point that came across during that debate was in fact that technology transfer does not mean only manufacturing drugs in developing countries. And in fact, one of the big points that came across during the debate was the fact that uh, technology transfer can take many forms. It's not just about building plants, it's also about training people, it's about also sharing experience. And in that regard, uh, we have uh, set up a partnership with the uh, European Developing Countries Clinical Trial Partnership, the EDCTP, that is a flagship initiative of the European Union, uh, for the pharmaceutical industry to work together with EDCTP in offering fellowships for uh, scientists from sub-Saharan Africa to spend some time in the pharmaceutical industry in Europe. It's important to realize, for instance, that the, the European Union is the largest contributor uh, in uh, helping the developing world get better access to healthcare. In fact, we feel also that, that uh, European political decision makers have got something to, to tell uh, to political decision makers in developing countries. Uh, if we look at the European social model, it is very much based on the solidarity system. We feel that this European model that is based on solidarity can be in fact very interesting for developing countries uh, to look at. And we believe a lot in experience sharing, we believe a lot in, in, in looking at what other people have done, sometimes what mistakes they have done so that they are not repeated elsewhere. And uh, it's also part of our uh, intent to uh, facilitate experience sharing between political decision makers from the North and the South. I think the main challenge for the Global Health Initiative stems from the sheer complexity of uh, what access to healthcare encompasses. It's a lot of very complex, very diverse issues that, re that involve many different stakeholders. Uh, and clearly the solution to deal with the comp this complexity is in partnerships. Only through partnerships can you get all the skills, all the energy, all the challenges also uh, that will make a difference. So one of our objectives uh, uh, in the Global Health Initiative is really uh, to paraphrase the words of uh, Dr. Margaret Chan, the Director General of the World Health Organization, that the industry, when it comes to access to healthcare, be seen not as the problem, but as part of the solution. <laughs>